Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Monday. It is June 20th. The year is 2022, and we are streaming live right here on YouTube. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I'm privileged that you've come by. And for all of those of you that are here that are returning, I'm so glad you're back because tonight I have something really special for you. I'm going to teach you a 3D fun fold. Now I'm making mine into a bird house birthday card. I had to say that slow, but I've got several other samples to share with you with different themes and different layouts. And you're going to see how versatile this shaped 3D fun fold card really is. Now, a couple of things I want to make sure that you are aware of before we get started tonight is about the free project sheet. That's going to be available when the live stream is over down in the video description. You'll find a link that'll navigate you over to the pictures, the cutting dimensions, the supplies and a template. And there's actually two templates there for you tonight. We'll talk a little bit about that once we get stamping. The other thing I want you to know about is that your feedback and commenting and chatting here live is so important to us. We love talking and interacting with you. But in order to do so, you're required by YouTube to log in using your Gmail email address. So please do so so that we can comment and chat with you. I do come back and I read every single comment. And then I want to introduce you to tonight's moderator. It's Gina Curcio Holly. You'll see her name here in blue. There's a little wrench next to her name. And you might recognize that surname. Gina is my daughter. She's also the sales and marketing director here at Lisa Stamp Studio and an avid card maker. And she is more than capable of answering your card making questions and providing links for things. So she's here off in the live chat to be able to help those of you that are here with us live. Now I have two other announcements for you that are big and I want to make sure I get them out of the way first because you know how it is when we go stamping. So let me go over to a screen and show you this. Guess what? Tomorrow, free shipping. If you place a $75 product order before tax and shipping in my online store, Stampin' Up! is going to provide a free shipping, but it's only for tomorrow. It's one day only. That is Tuesday, June 21st. The year is 2022. Please remember it begins at Mountain Time at midnight and it will end at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time on June 21st. Don't forget to take advantage of that. There are lots of last chance products that are retiring, many of which have been greatly reduced. You'll want to get your hands on those and anything else on your wish list. And then the last announcement is this. You are not going to want to miss meeting us. The entire Lisa Stamp Studio team is going to be live and an in-person event here in Trinity, Florida. Now we have had people tell us they're traveling from all over. We've got Texas and Jersey and everywhere in between. It doesn't matter where you're coming from, whether you fly or drive, we want to meet you. This is a four hour event for $30. There's a $5 add on if you wanna do a couple simple make and takes, prize patrol and lots of fun. You'll find all the information over at my website. Okay, let's get stamping. All right, let's start with the scoring. This is not difficult, but I'm going to teach it to you two different ways. Now, I've got my Stampin' Up! paper trimmer here, which I absolutely love. That clear cutting guide, it's going to show up as a champ tonight, my friends, because you're going to see how beneficial it is for tonight's card. Now, for the birdhouse card that I'm going to demonstrate, remember I have several others for you. I'm going to be using soft suede for the card base. I know that this is kind of dark, so I'm going to bring in a silver colored pencil to kind of help with the tick marks. Now, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to score it in half. This is four and a quarter by 11. Please remember that free project sheet has all those cutting dimensions in there for you, as well as the supplies. So half of 11 is five and a half inches. So I'm lining it up here. There is a nice straight edge here at the top. There's also one at the bottom. It includes both the scoring and the cutting blades. They stay right on the track. You navigate them up and down. Fantastic. And then all I'm going to do is score that in half. Now that we've got the halfway mark, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close it. I'm going to teach you, like I said, two ways. So the first one is obviously we would fold this in half. Some of you don't have a trimmer that with a clear guide, so it's difficult for you to do some measuring. So I want to be able to teach you if you have a ruler. So if you have a ruler and you don't have possibly a T-square or even a trimmer, I want you to find the center of the card front itself. Remember, I folded this. 
So the center at this would be two and one eighths of an inch. So I'm lining that up here. And this is where I love my trimmer because guess what? My mechanical pencil is gonna fit right down inside of here. Now, if you haven't heard me talk about this before, oh, this is amazing. This has an ultra soft lead. The eraser on this is a champ. You're gonna be able to find it linked for you in my craft room favorites over on my website under the shop tab. Now that we know where the center is, you're gonna to need to measure, this is the crease side now, remember this is the open side, one and a half inches down on both sides. Now I wanna give a quick shout out to Diane Barnes from Australia. I saw this card and I decided to change it up a little bit, but the original layout of the card idea is hers. So at one and a half inches here, I've got the crease here, I can go ahead and I can mark it here and then here. So you wanna do it on both sides of the cardstock. All right, obviously we're gonna need to do that on this side as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it again and then mark at one and a half inches is here. So I'm gonna mark here and I'm gonna mark here. Now I'm gonna tell you the easier way, okay? Because if, obviously if you're using a ruler, that's gonna be a little bit more challenging. The easiest way, once I made these tick marks, do you wanna know what I found out? I just left the card open. I found out that those tick marks fell at a perfect spot. They fell at four inches, right here. I lined it up at four inches and I made a tick mark. It's exactly the same mark I made previously here and here. And the second tick mark actually fell at seven inches. And I'm gonna slide that all the way over to here, which is that extendable arm on this paper trimmer. Gotta love that. Here I am. And again, I can see my tick marks are already there, there and there. That is going to make your life a lot easier if you don't want to fold and score in from the side. So I've given you two options for this. And here's what's great. This is inside your free project sheet. So I made this template for you. Keep in mind, this is a template. It's not a sample, which means you can't cut it out and trace it. But I marked the one and a half inch mark. So if you want those little cheat marks, you're going to put four inches and seven inches. And you're going to work from one end when you do that. Okay, that's going to help you. The next part is really super easy, but so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna go over this. Now I'm gonna kind of go over where that center little mark is here. I'm trying not to make this too, too big so it's too not too um, obscure in your video. And I'll make another one here. So you can see that those two tick marks are there. And let's come into here. There's another one and there's another one. Okay, let me hold this up so that you can see it. So here is our center. And then we've got one and a half, one and a half from the crease on both sides of the paper. Guess what? We're going to make an X. That's all there is. So I'm going to collapse this just to give you a little bit more space here in the camera view. And here is where that clear cutting track comes into play. I am now able to navigate this paper so that these two tick marks are going to fall with inside the cutting and scoring blade track. So I'm going to line up this line here and the bottom line here, and I can rotate that paper to make it really easy for me. I'm doing my best to keep my head out of your camera view. And then I'm gonna close that clear drawer. Now I can look straight through here and I can see that those tick marks are perfectly lined up and we're gonna score. Okay, and we're gonna open this up and we're gonna turn it and we're gonna do the exact same thing this way. So I'm looking here and here. And you know, we all sometimes kind of shift the paper just a little bit, which is why that clear track is like a lifesaver and then we're gonna score again. I like to make sure if that if you're using a ruler and you're not using a trimmer with a scoring blade that you have that center mark so that you know where you should be intersecting. Okay, I'm gonna lay this aside because this is gonna turn into a 3D fold in just a minute. I made a mechanism for this card so it would stand up. Many of you love that. You want your cards to be able to be displayed when you send them. This is just a square piece of cardstock in the exact same color. It is two inches by two inches. You're gonna score at every half inch. So I'm just gonna make it easy for you. I'm gonna do the first one at a half an inch right here, and I'm gonna score. And then I'm gonna move it over to one, and then I'm gonna score, and then I'm gonna do it one and a half. So that's each half inch of this two inch piece, and I'm gonna score, all right? So we've got our crease lines here, and I'm gonna to talk to you about this as we go along, all right? Now there's one more thing we're gonna do because this is going to have a 3D shape. We're gonna need a shape for this for the front of the card. I want a panel here. But let me show you how this folds up first before we move on. Now the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is to take the first diagonal line 
and score up on itself. And I'd like to go over it with my bone folder. Then we're going to take that other diagonal line and we're going to score it up on itself as well. Now, I love this because if you're like me and you made very prominent tick marks, what we're going to do now is we are going to flip it over. Do you see how these areas have become inverted, which means they're going to the inside? All you have to do is push. So push them down and then squish the front. Do you see how it looks like a house? Isn't that fantastic? All right, so then we're just going to go over this with the bone folder. We want to reinforce all those score lines. I'm going to add designer series paper here. And you might be wondering, well, how are you going to do that? Super easy. Let me show you how. We're going to go back here to the trimmer because I'm going to do a little bit of measuring. And I've got a piece of designer series paper here. I have fallen in love with this paper and this is Gina's fault. <laughs> this is called the Happy Forest Friends. And although I wasn't crazy about the little images, they are cute. I didn't know if I would use it much, but let me tell you what, the alternate sides are incredible. So please don't overlook designer series papers with Stampin' Up. They are double-sided to give you lots and lots of options. So for this, you're gonna find the center. This is four inches by five and a quarter. So I'm gonna come in with my pencil again, and the halfway mark is at two inch. And I made a little tick mark right there. And the exact same one and a half inch mark is what we're gonna to need to do here on two sides. Do you see I've done it already? But I'm gonna simulate it for you to make it easy. Turn your paper sideways, line it up at one and one half inch. So again, if you're using a ruler, that's gonna make your life easy. One here and one here. So top and bottom when it's horizontal. Now all we have to do is connect the dots. It's very, very simple. So let me show you. We've got one here, here, and here. We're going to make the point from connecting this tick mark to this tick mark. So again, there's that paper trimmer coming into play. I'm going to close that door. I am looking right through here where that blade is going to slide. This time we are going to use the cutting blade and we're going to cut. And now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this and we're going to do the exact same thing. So I just have it upside down. My point is here and my tick mark is here. I'm looking to make sure they're lined up the best that I can get them, and then we're going to cut. Look at that. Is that just not a champ? Amazing. All right, so I did this also on a piece of white cardstock, and I'll explain this to you in just a moment. The great thing about this card is it has a 3D effect, but there's also lots of place for you to add all kinds of fun stuff. All right, now let's go ahead and put that off to the side. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to work on an inside panel. I want to make this 3D, as I said, which means I need to make a window. Now, again, all the cutting dimensions are gonna be in that free project sheet. I am going to die cut an opening on here, and you're gonna see on my other samples that it does not matter what shape you make it. You're gonna to need to be cognizant of the width, obviously, but it doesn't matter what shape. Wait till you see all the other ones I made. Now, I wanted to create something using these beautiful shapes dies. I fell in love with these. Now I did take a couple of them out before you join me. They're here in my little magnetic Titan tray. That's also in my craft room favorites for you. I was tired of losing these little pieces and this magnetic tray is a champ when I'm die cutting. So they're cascading sizes of, of course, the hexagons, these amazing um, embossed circles. It's kind of an odd looking oval, but it's really fun because it embosses um, just a real random image around it. And then some other shapes in here. So I went ahead and I pulled these out. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to lay this die on top of the cardstock and I'm looking to center it. I don't like to measure. It's too much work. So I'm looking here, top, bottom, sides, and if it looks fairly even, we're good to go. But if you're like me, it is going to slip and slide all through your die cutting machine. So let me talk to you about this. If you don't have the post-it labeling and cover-up tape, this is a game changer. This is also in my craft room favorites. You're going to love this stuff. It's a little wide, so I'm able to rip it in half and I'm able to get multiple uses from this. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to anchor this down to my paper using that straight edge here at the top. So I'm just going to tape this down right across the die. And guess what? When I go to pick this up and put it through my die cutting machine, lickety split, super awesome. But you know what? I just realized that I did the wrong size. I wanted to do the smaller one. Okay, let me show you what I did with this. I got ahead of myself because I got excited. Let me add my tape right back here. All right, remember that designer series paper we just cut? Let's put that opening on the bigger one because I want to create a layer underneath. 
So here we are back to what we've already folded. This is the designer series paper. I'm gonna bring in that silicone craft sheet and I'm gonna add adhesive around the outside perimeter. Now, those of you that like liquid glue, you just go for it. Just don't leave it too close to those edges. I am not a liquid glue girl. Um, I have arthritis in my basal joints, so it's hard to squeeze. So this works well. I want you to make an X here in the middle as well because we are going to make a die cut opening and I wanna make sure that it doesn't lift once it's opened. This now is going to get centered here, leaving a small margin of cardstock all the way around. All right, let's go back to this die. We are gonna use it, but I wanna use the bigger one here. So the exact same thing that I talked to you about before, we're going back to the post-it labeling and cover-up tape. I am going to gravitate this kind of to the center, probably a little bit more at the top because I already know how I want my card to lay out. And again, you're going to tape it down. This is going to mean that it's foolproof when you put it through your die cutting machine. Now, I did do that ahead of time, which left us this. So you can see here now we've got that opening. Now this one, I didn't crease yet because I found that when I die cut it, it was easier if I didn't crease up on those lines. So let's go over that step one more time. So we're just gonna fold and invert these. And again, this one's gonna be backwards because remember the last one, we um, actually had done it upside down, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bring this one down and we're gonna bring this one down and then we're gonna bring these in, okay? So we're just working the cardstock to condition it. All right, now we've got a little pleat. I'm going back over it with my bone folder. This is where I wanted that later. I got so excited about this card. Here's the slightly smaller one to this. Watch what this does. You're gonna do the exact same thing we just did. Anchor it down, die cut it on the size that I give you in the project sheet, all right? That is going to leave you this. This now is going to get adhered to here. Isn't this really neat? Because it gives you that um, illusion of the 3D effect. And this is not where it ends. What I want to do is I want to adhere this here. And I'm going to give you a couple tips about this because I learned the hard way. You're going to open up the card and we're going to add adhesive in two places. You're going to add it around the perimeter of the white. So I'm going around here. And you're also going to add it around the inside perimeter of here that's going to ensure that it's not going to lift. So I'm just going to add a little bit in each of those spots. And I always say no contortionist adhesive. So always turn your project, make it easy for your hand so you're pulling. And again, it's my arthritis that makes it difficult for me sometimes to get my little adhesive going. So I get, use my silicone craft sheet as a great tip for me. All right, so here is the card. Now before you stick this down, I want you to know that it's going to go near the inside peaks of the card. So I'm gonna kind of hold it here, leaving a small margin on the sides. Don't worry about the bottom. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that when these collapse, they don't hit my adhesive. And I'm gonna hold it. The other thing you can do is go this way. So here's your silicone craft sheet. I'm gonna leave it flat here on my work surface. I got a little adhesive hanging off. And then I am going to mimic this, which means I'm gravitating, just holding it over the opening and I'm just gonna kind of hover and see that it's even. And then once it is, we're gonna tack that down. Do you guys see how I have adhesive sticking out here? I swear it's a Monday, isn't it? All right, so let me show you how we fix this. If you don't have one of these, you need it. This is an adhesive pickup. This is in my craft room favorites as well because obviously, like you, I make mistakes. I prefer to pull it in one direction and look what it does it picks up that adhesive. It is fantastic. And I'm also going to give you another tip. Regardless if you have this or not, depending on your adhesive, because obviously mine is super duper strong, you may have a little bit of a gummy area. All right, so I'm going to kind of go over that. Let me show you what I will do next. I am going to grab this. This embossing buddy bag has an anti-static powder in it. It is going to be available in the brand new mini catalog that debuts with a toolkit on July 1st. You want this. So I'm gonna kind of go over this area that has adhesive and kind of tap it down. And to be honest with you, you probably didn't even have to use the adhesive pickup because of what I'm gonna be doing here on the card. It's probably not going to show. Hey, we make mistakes, it's crafting. We learn to fix them together, right? All right, so the next thing we're gonna do now that we have that 3D kind of layer here is we're gonna work on some decorating and I'm gonna show you how the 3D adhesives 
of this bottom come together. So I've got some cardstock here, and the very first thing I'm going to do is a little bit of stamp it. So I've got some ink pads here, and the first one is soft suede because that matches, of course, the card base. And then I'm going to bring in a piece of scrap paper. These are the small grid sheets. I cannot live without them because they help to keep the ink contained on my work surface. So I'm going to pull out a little branch here for my birdhouse. And I decided that I didn't want this too, too strong. So I'm going to ink this up and I'm going to do what's called stamp off. So I'm taking off one layer of ink here on my scratch paper before I place it here. I'm going to work backwards this way. Okay, I like to stamp off all the excess ink on my grid paper before I clean it on my stamp and scrub or my stamp and chamois. And that is a fantastic tip for you. If you're like me and you're in a stamping marathon, that's going to eliminate your trips to the sink to rinse out a dirty surface that's been cleaning your stamps. While we have that out, I've got a scrap piece here of soft suede cardstock. And you may not know this, but tone on tone is a wonderful thing. So here comes the nest. We're going to stamp that there. I'm taking off all that excess ink. That's going to reduce my trips to the sink. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use some additional images. I'm going to add some leaves to that. And this is old olive. Let's move that out of the way. And this is already situated. Check this out. I'm going to show you the stamp set and the bundle in just a minute. Isn't this fantastic? So all you have to do is just line up these little pieces. It's meant to be abstract. It doesn't have to be perfect. Fantastic. And I decided I needed a little bit of color in here because obviously the card base is brown and we don't want this to be too, too boring. So Poppy Parade goes beautifully with this soft suede. And inside the stamp set, there's this little tiny flower that I have fallen in love with. So I'm going to add one here and I'm going to add another here and another here. And there's no rhyme or reason. You can put them wherever you'd like them. All right. So now we've got our flower. Now, for those of you that are just squealing, thinking that you're going to have a dye for this, you don't. But let me talk you through a few things. I am using this Sweet Songbirds bundle, and I have fallen in love with this because it is so versatile. You can make baby cards, get well cards, thinking of you cards, birthday cards, you name it, you've got it. It does come as a bundle for a 10% savings, which would include the punch because you're gonna want one with the other. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but there is not a die. Now, you hate fussy cutting, some of you tell me. So I'm gonna give you a very, very quick tip. I've already got one that's done. The most important thing I can teach you is to never cut straight on top of the stamped line. You wanna leave a little bit of cardstock edge all the way around. The other thing I often hear from people is, how do you go around those edges? Well, no different than a die. So you just want to make sure that you just leave a little silhouette and you're turning it. Now I'm going to tell you another tip. Here on the nest, you may be looking at those edges thinking, oh no. Okay, watch. I am not going to turn my scissors. I am turning the paper. Do you see how I'm going inside and outside of those little curves? Now the first time you do this, it may feel really, really strange but it works amazing and you get those really fun edges. Okay, so that's just some great tips for you about fussy cutting. Now I'm gonna put those off to the side because like I said, I have some already done, but we need a bird, right? So let's go back to that poppy parade. Now, like I told you, there is a punch that goes with it and you're gonna notice that there are multiple pieces on this punch. This is what we call a builder punch. It's great because obviously it's four punches in one but it might be challenging for you on how to position the pieces. So what I do is I take a scrap piece of cardstock and I punch it to create a template. And I indicate the top of the die when you put the paper in. This is going to help me cheat so I know which way to stamp the images. So I've got my large bird here and I'm gonna ink that up in the poppy parade. Now these pieces are gonna to come together famously. I'm gonna stamp it over here, really doesn't matter because the builder punch is pretty much up and down. And you're gonna see that my bird is slightly tipped this way. So I'm gonna stamp it here, lots of firm, even pressure, and there we go, we've got our bird. Before I punch it, it's a lot easier while it's a good size for me to go ahead and add the extra pieces to my bird. So let's go ahead and use the black and let's give him some eyes. This is all part of that stamp set. There's even little sleepy eyes inside the stamp set, which makes it super duper fun. 
And then let's go ahead and fill in that beak. And for this, I am using a Daffodil Delight. Now, this is the beauty of photopolymer. Look how tiny that is, all right? I'm gonna ink this up and I'm gonna stamp it here. Again, trying not to get my head in your camera view. If for some reason that's not dark enough for you, do it again. I always say, you know what? This is the beauty of photopolymer is you can actually go over an image several times when you can see through it. All right, so that's kind of taking care of my bird. Let's go ahead and let's punch him out. I'm gonna put that template right back in that stamp set, but we're gonna need it one more time because this bird needs a wing. So I'm gonna line this up, looking for that small border all the way around, just like you would with a die. Tip number two, if you lightly push on the punch, it locks the cardstock in place, which means it will not shift when you punch out the image, okay? Remember, it's a builder die. So if you're wondering now how you're gonna get that stamped wing, let me show you. Here is that template once again. I'm gonna turn it to make it easier for me to have a little bit more cardstock going inside the punch. I don't want this to jam inside these openings. Here is my wing. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink this up and you're gonna see from my template how that wing is going, right? So the rounded end has to be here on the left. Very simple. If you make that template and you stick that inside the stamp case, you are golden every single time. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place this inside of here and then I can go ahead and I can punch. And the one thing I love about builder punches is the scraps are fantastic so that you can use them and maximize them so there's no wasted pieces. All right, so let me push those pieces off to the side and let's put this card together. All right, let me put my template here. Remember this part? Well, remember I told you this was gonna be a 3D, which means you're gonna be able to see back here. And I decided it was too plain. So I want to grab a piece of designer series paper. And this is from that exact same package, Happy Forest Friends. And I cut it so that it's going to fit inside of here. Now you might be wondering, well, how are we going to sign it? Remember I told you it's 3D, that's coming. So let's go ahead and let's flip this over. And those other samples I have for you, don't forget, they do not have a birdhouse theme, but wait till you see how I use the shape of this card for some really interesting card designs. You're going to love them. Be cognizant of the direction if you have paper. Be cognizant of the cutting dimensions. So I'm looking to align this here at the bottom. Before I go crazy, I always like to give it a little cursory look to make sure that it's gonna line up just right. And it is, so let's go ahead and let's center this and we're gonna tack this down. All right, so when this is closed, we now have a pretty little tree background, don't we? All right, let's put on those pieces that I previously die cut. I have those in my little container here. So we've got the branch, which is the one that I stamped. Let's go ahead and let's work that here. I'm gonna open this up to make it flat and easy for my hand. We are gonna use dimensionals. I have a really important tip for you about the bird. I'm gonna turn this upside down and we are gonna use mini dimensionals and a mixture of regular size dimensionals. Because of my arthritis, it's hard to do those little detailed things with my fingers, so I absolutely love that I can use my take your pick tool. So I'm gonna come in with the smaller pieces here. And I think one's gonna actually fit here and I love that shape. I can use that to my advantage. Now let's talk about this, kind of narrow, right? So let me give you another tip. I keep a pair of scissors here in the studio that have ribbon on the end. That means they're for the sticky stuff. While the mini dimensionals are right here on their paper backing, I cut them in half. You can even use that negative border and cut a strip if you'd like. Now that they're smaller and I have a straight edge, look, so easy for me to put them right on top of here and I can just kind of balance them out. We'll use that take your pick tool attachment that comes with it. There are interchangeable tips. I'm gonna remove those backings. This is gonna allow me to make sure that this is gonna rest well on the card front and it's going to assure me that while this is going through the mail meter at the post office, it's not gonna get all lopsided. I'm gonna work it down here. Remember, we don't want to impede on this window just yet. So I'm gonna attach that here, staying within the parameters of the card so it fits in an A4 envelope and it fits. Wait till I show you. I did my bird and I got my beak here. Okay, now we're not gonna do the, beard, the beak, I'm sorry, the bird wing, too many body parts <laughs> yet. Let's put these two pieces together. The easiest is this way. So I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive here on the back side to hold my bird. 
And I'm going to tip her or him a little bit this way because I want the tail to stick out just for a little visual interest. Let's take that wing now and we're going to grab one of those mini dimensionals we've previously used. Fits perfectly. And you know what? Let's give this a little bit of character. So let's make this go kind of down like so. Important. Obviously, you're going to have to be very careful where you place adhesive because it's going to show or it's going to stick when this collapses for the envelope. So what I like to do is get a visual idea of where this is going to go. And for me, I'm going to go ahead and place it a little bit off to the side, staying within the perimeter of the card. Here, I'm going to take my handy dandy pencil and I'm giving myself a little line. So I know nothing is going to go here. We're going to work down here. That saves you a whole lot of work and guessing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use one of those large dimensionals to my advantage. And I'm going to anchor those pieces together to make sure they're good and stuck. And I want to make sure that this is well adhered. And I, you know what? I actually think this is probably pretty good just for grins. Let's go ahead and add a mini dimensional down here. And then we're going to take off that backings one more time. And we'll toss those. And now what we're going to do is we're going to work on putting this where we originally said we were going to place it. If you are concerned that you have a dimensional that's going to show, open this up first. Look it. It never fails, right? There's always one. So we can move this down or let's use that handy dandy tool. Do you see that end? Reversible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that dimensional because it's foam tape and I'm going to pull it right off so I know that I can just release this. This now will not stick to the inside of my card. This is going to go like so. We're going to do the 3D part in just a moment. Remember that white cardstock? Well, I did the stamping for the back ahead of time. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to add a little adhesive here. Oh, wait till you see these other cards. Wait till you see the openings on them too. I think you're really going to enjoy this. This is now going to go on the back side of the card. And to finish this off, we have to make it a 3D so that it can stand up. Obviously, there really is no place to stamp inside, so that's why we have this. Remember this piece here? We are going to fold this like an accordion. So down, up, and down. Okay? I am going to go over it with my bone folder to make sure those are really well enforced. We are going to add adhesive on two ends. So I'm going to do one end here and one end here. Okay, I'm going to fold this up. So there we go. We've got a little stand. Are you ready? With the center crease facing down, so I have the sticky parts here, you are going to center this near the very bottom center of your card. And then you're going to collapse it, making sure that those pleats are to the inside and you are going to press. Now the last thing was for this, I have the greeting, which I did ahead of time. I'll grab myself a couple mini dimensionals for those. Hey, this tool works great in every fashion. I can't live without this. This honestly is the best $10 you will ever spend. You'll be able to find that in my online store at lisastampstudio.com under shop. And I love that to remove those backings as well. Let's add our little greeting here to the front. And then I'm going to put that right above here like so. Okay, but look at this is how it stands. So now it's a freestanding card. It's going to be displayed. Isn't this adorable? But okay, wait, it's going to get better. Are you ready? I have a couple other samples for you. Before we go too far, I know I have a naysayer out there. So I want to show you that it's going to fit perfectly inside the medium white envelopes. Because I made the pleat on the bottom, it's going to collapse perfectly. You're not going to need any extra postage unless you use very, very bulky embellishments. And this is what I absolutely love about this card. Isn't that fun? All right, here we go. My next one is using the stamp set called In the Moment. Isn't this fantastic? So instead of that hexagon, I used a square. And I used that beautiful butterfly kisses paper. I made it look like a window so that you could actually look through the front of what might be a house shape. Exact same bottom. And then here, I actually did the words on the back. But unlike this one, I didn't use designer series paper here in the window. I actually stamped my image and colored it with the Stampin' Blends alcohol-based markers. Now we have one more, and this one is from Heron Habitat. This is the bundle where I use the stamp set and the coordinating dies. This is the In the Horizon designer series paper. It is sold out. Remember I told you those last chance products, 
They're going very quickly. The last day is June 30th. Shop tomorrow during the free shipping. Pretty, pretty, pretty circle here. I wanted that kind of porthole kind of look to this. These designer series papers do all the work for you so pretty. Same bottom, inside 3D card, and there is your backside. Really, really fun. And they all are freestanding and they all stand up. I would absolutely love to know which one of these is your favorite. Would you do me a favor and would you leave me a comment below? Now, there's a couple things you need to know before we go that are really important. The first is head over to my website at lisastampstudio.com. I want to send a free PDF tutorial project to you every Thursday. Scroll all the way down to my website at the very bottom where it says subscribe and put in your email address and I'll send it to you every Thursday. It is no frills. We'd love to have you. The second is I have a very vast PDF tutorial library over on my website. So do me a favor and go over there and check it out. If you're here right now on YouTube, if you click that thumbs up button here, that helps me immensely with YouTube. I would love to have you do so. And then finally, subscribe if you haven't and click that little bell icon in the word all because you're gonna to wanna to know about next week's live stream. It is going to be Monday, June 27th. And guess who's gonna be here with me? Gina is gonna be here live with me. Ready? We have eight samples to share with you. We will be stamping simultaneously for a really fun paper technique. You're not gonna to wanna to miss. The cards are amazing. We would love to have you back here. Um, one last thing, I just want to put that date right up there on the screen so that you have it for your calendar. And I look forward to having you all join me next Monday when Gina is here. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye.